So hi guys, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm here to speak about functional domain modeling. But uh, before speaking about the how and the what, I would like to, uh, to say why. Why we want to do this stuff? Why do we want to do functional domain modeling? So I think historically we have had the two trends in uh, programming languages. Uh, on one side, we started from the hardware, and uh, we added the abstraction on top of it. And usually, the way we, we did this uh, is uh, always uh, paying at attention to performance, uh, never sacrificing performances in the name of the beauty of the orthogonality of, of the language. And you have a, a, a clear, very clear example of this in Java, because we, in Java we have primitive types that, of course, breaks the, the uh, object-oriented paradigm. Uh, but uh, but uh, we did this in the name of performance, OK? So we, we had this fifth family of imperative language that are born in this way. On, on the other side, we studied from the lambda calculi, from the mathematics, from the category theory. We uh, subtracted a few ab abstraction, but uh, never sacrificing the beauty of the language. And uh, we ended up with these uh, functional languages. Okay? So the situation at the beginning of the century was that uh, uh, the language on the left was designed to produce some uh, uh, working enterprise level software, while the languages on the right was uh, designed to produce some uh, academic paper. Okay? Uh, but uh, uh, about 10 years ago, or a bit more, uh, it happened that uh, uh, the industry started producing uh, a multi-core processor. Okay? And we found that uh, uh, the, the, the idea, the concept that were behind those language on the right, the, the functional languages, was very good uh, uh, to work with multi-core languages because they allow better parallelism, okay? But at the same time, we didn't want to, to lose uh, our knowledge uh, uh, of uh, the object-oriented style, the object-oriented paradigm. So what in reality happened is that uh, uh, we saw that uh, some hybrid languages uh, born, like Scala and F-sharp, okay. and so and what happened with Java is that uh, uh, Java uh, is slowly moving in this direction with Java 8 by adding, by adding uh, um, lambda expression. Okay, so that's why I'm, I'm uh, speaking about functional uh, domain modeling today, and that's why I'm speaking. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my examples in Java. Okay, so what is a functional program? It's a program made by uh, only pure function, so there are no observable side effects. And uh, the side effects that are not allowed are this list. Okay? So you cannot reassign a variable or modify the data structure in place, or uh, set in a field. You cannot throw an exception. This is very important in my opinion. And ideally, you cannot uh, take any input or send any output. Okay? Uh, in reality, uh, a few of this stuff is uh, avoidable. You shouldn't do this when doing pure functional programming. The other stuff, of course, you need to take some input at some point or produce some output at some, to at some point, but these things are deferrable, okay? So the reality is that uh, uh, functional programming is a restriction, but of course it's not a restriction on uh, 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 what you can achieve, but only how you write your programs. So the, the biggest difference, in my opinion, between uh, the object-oriented programming and the functional programming is that uh, in object-oriented, uh, we uh, make the code uh, under, uh, understandable by encapsulating the moving part. Why, while in the functional programming, we don't want moving part at all. Okay, we want immutability, and why do we want immutability? Uh, because object, immutable objects are easy to use, and it's uh, uh, 
Uh, you, can, uh, you can figure out this very quickly if you compare the API of the Mutable uh, uh, old uh, uh, calendar uh, uh, API with the new uh, date and time API that is totally mutable, okay? And uh, implementing an immutable object is easier uh, because it, there is less wrong that you have to think about that, uh, that can go wrong. Uh, and, and that's also because immutable objects reduce the number of interaction. And of course, if everything is uh, immutable, they are also uh, inherently thread safe, okay? So let me start with a few examples. But before starting, I want to do another very quick premise. Uh, the, uh, one very common question when I did uh, some similar talks in the past is that, uh, do you really think that we should program this way in Java? And uh, my, my answer is, uh, I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I'm a very pragmatic uh, person. What I'm saying is that uh, uh, for 20 years, you have been exposed to the total weight of the object-oriented domain modeling. Now I'm showing you the total black of the functional programming style. And the reality is that there are at least 50 shades of gray in the middle. So you, your, your task, your job, is uh, uh, choose the right shades, the, the right level of mix between object-oriented and uh, functional programming that you want uh, in, your, in your problem at the end, okay? So let's start with, uh, with a very simple example. I'll, I will tell you a story, and uh, I will tell you this story, the same story under two different point of view. Uh, the the object-oriented one and the functional one, okay? So the, the object-oriented one is pretty simple. I have a, a bird and a cat, and uh, my story is that uh, the cat captured the bird and uh, finally eat it, okay? Pretty simple. Let's, uh, let's see the uh, functional programming uh, counterpart, okay? What I'm doing here? Uh, first of all, everything is immutable, okay? Uh, in, the f in the former version, I had the, both the, the, the bird and the uh, full uh, Boolean flag that are uh, mutable. Here, everything is immutable, okay? And uh, another thing is that uh, we have emphasis on, in functional programming, typically, we are more emphasis on verbs instead of names. So what I'm doing here is that uh, I have basically these two functions, these that are uh, two sub-stories, and by composing them with the end end operator, I'm creating a story by composing the sequence of the two sub-stories, okay? So when I want to play my story, I just apply uh, uh, an, a cat and a bird, I just send a cat and a bird to the story, and the, and the result is a full cat, okay? Uh, the other thing to notice is, is that here I'm using the type system in a more expressive way. I mean, uh, I'm not encoding uh, the fact that I have uh, a full cat or a cat with a, with a, with a prey uh, by uh, using uh, some uh, flags, but I'm using totally different classes, okay? Uh, and, uh, and this is very powerful because uh, in this case, I really don't need to test anything, everything works just because it compiles, because I'm not allowed to, to call it on a, on a cat that do, doesn't have a, a, a catch uh, yet, or uh, I'm not allowed to do anything on a full cat because the story is finished and done. I mean, this code compiles, and because compiles, it is correct, okay? So the idea is to uh, move from uh, 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 an object-centric world to a function-centric world, okay? And uh, uh, again, I, I have uh, this building block that are the sub-story, and I'm just composing them. And this is my full story, and this is very typical. So this is very typical that uh, we, we have very small function, uh, we have uh, a function that are the smallest, as small as possible because in this case, in doing so, they are more reusable, okay? 
they are more general and then reusable. And uh, we, with this idea in mind, we can uh, design our, our API, okay? Uh, so uh, each part, uh, each uh, method, each function of our API uh, do a, a very simple job. And another uh, important thing that we should do when designing our API is, that is designing it in a way that uh, we can easily compose this small task. So uh, in this example, I have uh, an API uh, to uh, buy an item from some uh, online shop. So I have a method to buy a list of items, meaning that I, I put these items in a cart, and then I order the cart and I get an order, and then I get, and then I can deliver the order. Okay. So if I want to implement the one-click buy feature of uh, Amazon, if you uh, shop on it, the one-click buy uh, function is just the composition of these three functions. Okay. And uh, by doing this, I, I get uh, this one-click buy function that takes an input, a list of items, and uh, returns as, out of, as output a delivery. So I apply this function on the list of the item I want to buy. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just be returned with the delivery. But again, I'm doing this by composing small building block. Okay. So what's the essence of functional programming? I believe it's this one. I mean, the essence is that uh, I can uh, uh, treat data and uh, behavior exactly, exactly in the same way. This is uh, a method that uh, uh, belongs to the Java uh, API. It's, it's in, uh, in the collections utility class uh, that sort a of list given the, given Okay, the list that are the data, but also the comparator that are the behavior. How I want to sort the data in my list, okay? So, for example, I use this this way. And, uh, and this is very powerful because I'm, I'm treating data and behavior exactly in the same way. And this is an enabler for a lot of uh, uh, cool ideas. For example, if you if you don't think in these terms, the MapReduce algorithm uh, won't be possible. Because uh, what's the, uh, the strong point of the uh, MapReduce algorithm? The idea is that, uh, OK, I have uh, uh, one terabyte of data of this machine, but I have the, the computation on this other machine. OK? If, they are, if the essence of these two things was different, if uh, I can just move data, not computation, it means that I have to move this one terabyte of data from the first machine to the second one, okay? But I can treat computation, I can treat behavior as, as it was data, because they are. And then if, if my function is just one kilobyte of data, wh what do you want to move? You want, you want to move the function toward the data, right? Okay. So the essence is that, uh, uh, is this, and, uh, and this is what is called an IRDER function. Why? Because it is a function that accepts another function as an input. Okay? So this is really the essence. Data and behaviors are the same thing. Okay? And the IRDER function, I, don't, I have the feeling that for many uh, uh, Java developer is still a mind-blowing thing. But honestly, I don't, I don't understand why. Because there's a whole book the, the biggest part of us know very well that uh, speak about uh, high order function, if you think about it, okay? Because the common pattern, the strategy pattern, the, is just uh, uh, passing a function to another function, nothing else, okay? Or uh, the, the, the decorator pattern, as Venkat showed yesterday, is just a, a sequence in a combination of, uh, of functions, okay? So, they are all uh, uh, different way to do exactly the same thing. We use a high order function, okay? And uh, I believe, uh, personally, this book was good and bad for me uh, and, and for us as a, as a developer community. It was good because it gave it us a time, a common vocabulary. 
If I say strategy pattern, everything here, understand what I'm speaking about, okay? But uh, it's bad because by doing so, it put uh, our mind in a frame, okay? The framing of, of this object-oriented pattern. And uh, uh, if we abstract more, we will realize that all these patterns are all the same thing, the biggest part of them. They just use high order function. They are just function that accept another function as input and or output an a, a, another function as, as a result. Okay? So let me, let me demonstrate this with a, a simple example. Uh, I want to uh, uh, define a converter that is just, yeah, it's just this interface that converts to value. And uh, what I do is that uh, I create an abstract converter that implement the convert method. And uh, the strategy here is that uh, I can have different conversion rate, okay? So I can create different uh, concrete implementation that is a converter from miles to kilometer with this conversion rate, or a conversion from ounce to gram with this other conversion rate, and so on and so forth. Okay, so how, how do I use this? I'm intentionally uh, doing this in uh, old style uh, uh, pre-Javite programming. So uh, uh, I have a, I have a, a loop uh, to convert uh, this value and to each of the value in the original list, I uh, apply the conversion and I put the result in another list. Okay, so the way I use this is pretty trivial. I have this uh, three values, and I can use a converter or, the, or another, okay? So this is the object-oriented point of view. Uh, let's see the, 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 uh, of a different version, a functional version, okay? What I did uh, here is uh, extending the original, the Java 8 by function interface, because uh, I need some methods that are not present in, the, in that interface, okay? And uh, in particular, I want this carry method. Carry, what, what does it mean carry? Is that it means that I have a by function, a function that takes two parameters, and uh, I want to fix the value of one of the two, and of course, the result will be another function, this time of only one parameter, because the other one has been fixed, okay? Uh, so my converter, uh, implements this uh, new interface that I created. And, uh, and the way I use this is that uh, I have the converter uh, by invoking carry, this very super general converter, by invoking carry on it, I'm fixing the first parameter and the result is a function that takes only one parameter and, uh, and produce the result, okay? And, uh, now I can use this converter in, uh, uh, with, with the map method of a stream because it's a function. It is a converting function, okay? And if I want, uh, I want uh, a different converter with a different conversion rate, I can use exactly the same classes. The only thing I have to do is just changing the conversion rate here, okay? So let's try a, 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 a bit more difficult conversion. It's just difficult because the conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit requires to, uh, to add a constant. So uh, I create the converter exactly as I showed it before, but I need a second function that uh, at the end of this computation adds uh, 32 to the result, okay? And uh, you can see this as a single function, okay? This, from the outside, you can see this as a single function that takes the input and gives a result that is the conversion, the conversion that we wanted to achieve, okay? And uh, on, uh, for doing the opposite conversion, uh, I have to, uh, uh, again, add the two more methods to my extended by function because they are not present in the original by function. We have a, compose, a compose method in the uh, function interface in Java 8, but uh, we don't have uh, uh, these 
two methods in, uh, in the by function, so compose, meaning that uh, before the computation, I want to do something else and fix the value of, of one of the parameter of the by function with the result of that former computation, okay? So this is exactly what I did before. The difference is that uh, now I have to subtract 32 before, before applying the conversion rate, okay? And, uh, and so, again, the result is another building block that will do the opposite conversion, okay? And uh, again, I can use it, I can use it as before, okay? Everything clear so far? Okay. So, the, again, I, I'm, I'm repeating myself. Functions are just building block. The smallest this building block are, the more reusi reusable are. Okay, because they are more general. They are, are applicable in in uh, uh, many different contexts. Okay, let's go with uh, a different example. Uh, I wanted to uh, implement uh, in object-oriented style a uh, salary calculator. So uh, the, the basic method is this one. I, have, uh, I, I pass to it uh, uh, the, the gross salary, uh, and I'm returned with the net salary, and together with the gross salary, I have to uh, send a, a, a set of flags that uh, states uh, which one of these uh, uh, bonuses or taxes I wanted to apply to my gross salary in order to obtain the, 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 the net one. So if the first flag is true, I will apply the plus allowance. If the second is true, I, I will apply the bonus and so on. Uh, and of, uh, I, I'm, I'm not doing any check on the length of the string of these uh, arrays just for brevity, okay? So the, the way I use this stuff is this, okay? So I uh, calculate the, basic, the net salary of Bob by passing his basic salary and the set of flags, okay? And the problem, of course, is that uh, it's very, this is very error prone. It's very difficult to, to remember the right sequence of flags, okay? So in, uh, in uh, object-oriented, what I do is uh, uh, creating a builder, okay? So I have uh, these uh, flags internally, and I have this method that are with allowance that set the allowance flag to true, and uh, I will have uh, other with the bonus, with tax method, and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, I encapsulating the, 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 the switching of this flag with this method, and when I call the calculate, I can only pass the, only the basic salary because I, I already have set those flags, okay? So the way I use it is, is this way, and uh, in this way, I'm reading that uh, I, I, I don't have a set of flag. I'm, I'm reading in the code that on this salary, I'm applying in, uh, the bonus and the tax and not the other two functions, okay? Uh, and, and, and that's good, but, uh, uh, but uh, to extend this, uh, uh, this, uh, this object, I, I have to, to violate some principle. Uh, I have to, to open, the, the, to add a new function, I have to go inside the salary calculator, add another with function. And this is very verbose, and I'm, I'm also violating the, the open-closed principle. Okay, so let's try to uh, implement this stuff in a, in a more functional way. So I transformed those method in functions. These are pure function. The allowance function now just uh, does this uh, multiplication and returns a, a different uh, uh, returns the result as all other uh, functions. And uh, what what I do? How I transform the salary calculator? I have this uh, list of function, and every time uh, somebody calls with passing a function, I add. Uh, I add this function to my list, and when I have to calculate the salary, I create the stream, and I do a reduction, okay? I, I start from the identity function, and, uh, and then compose the identity function with the, all the functions in my list, okay? So the result will be a function that is 
the, the function that computes uh, my uh, uh, salary calculation by applying all the, the function that I passed here. And then to this function, I apply, I apply the basic salary. Okay? So you can read this as before. You can read here that I'm, I'm apply the bonus and the tax, but I have only one with single method. I don't have to create uh, one with method for each function that I want to apply. Okay? And moreover, if there is something that I didn't consider, I want to uh, add a new function that I didn't consider, there is one more tax, a regional tax, I can pass that function directly to, to, to the with, and, uh, and in this way, you have extensibility for free, okay? Uh, by the way, a bit uh, 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 a better version of that salary calculator is probably this one because this one is totally immutable now. Uh, now I have this function that does that does the calculation, and every time I call with, I uh, I create a new salary calculator by passing it another function that is the combination of the original function that I have with the new function that I'm, uh, I'm passed. Okay, so once again, I started with the identity function, and every time the user call with, I combine the function that I have at the end with the new function that the user is passing, and at that point, I will have just the function that will calculate the uh, gross salary, and when I have to do the calculation, I can just do apply. Okay, so this is totally mutable and a, a, a little better. Okay. So in my presentation uh, so far, I uh, uh, created, uh, uh, I modified a bit uh, the, the original Java library. Uh, I did some work, but. Uh, in most cases, you don't have two, meaning that uh, there are uh, a few library outside that uh, uh, add the more functional power to the original Java 8 API. And one of these library is called Java Slang. I really like it, and it offers you a few things that are missing in the native Java 8 library that are uh, the tuple. That is something really missing, I believe. Uh, you have uh, Im immutable collection. And uh, you have uh, the failure handling, not with exception, but with this try. Uh, we will speak about how the try works later. And uh, you have this sort of pattern matching with this uh, with this uh, uh, feature that you can see here, okay? Uh, and there are a lots of bunch stuff. So if you want to start doing uh, in a more functional way uh, in Java 8, I suggest you to give a look uh, to this library instead of reinventing the wheel, okay? So let's uh, see another example, okay? Uh, let's have a coffee break. So uh, we want to buy a coffee, okay? And uh, when I buy a coffee, I, I pass to this method my credit card. So my credit card is charged with the price of the, the cup of coffee, and I'm going to return it with, the, with, the, with that cup of coffee. And of course, sometimes I want to, uh, I, I'm Italian, so sometimes I want to offer a, a few coffees to my friend. I want, uh, and then I want a method that, uh, with which I can buy uh, more coffees. Uh, let's say I have ten, 10 friends, I want to buy 10 coffees, and then I do this. So I uh, 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 invoke this buy coffee, uh, I'm reusing this buy coffee by invoking it n times, and then uh, I'm returned with a stream of coffee, I put everything in a list, and I have my list of 10 coffees, okay? So what's wrong with this? I have a sad effect here because I'm charging the, the, the credit card. And so this is a very difficult to test, in my opinion. You have to use a mock object that I don't really like them. And uh, if you think about it, you have uh, also uh, a very big problem because uh, if you pay a fee every time your credit card is charged and you are about to buy 10 coffees, with this time you are uh, 
uh, you are using uh, your credit card 10 times and paying 10, 10 times the fee. And probably you don't want this, right? And this is because this side effect. So let's, let's try to not have this, okay? The way you to not have the, the side effect is this. Uh, when I invoke this buy coffee method, I return it with, I'm returning with a coffee, but also with somebody else. So I'm returning with two values, that's why I'm putting them in this tuple. I'm returning with a coffee and with the charge of the price of the coffee on my credit card. Okay, so now when I want to buy more coffee, uh, here I'm using, by the way, not the Java 8 stream, but the Java slang stream that is a bit that is a bit different API. So I'm doing exactly the before what I did before. Uh, so uh, subsequence zero to n is just limit to n. It's just exactly the same thing. Uh, here I'm returning the. Uh, with the stream of tuple of coffin and charge, and then I want to revert thing, revert this thing. I mean, I have a, 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 a stream of tuple, but I want a tuple of stream, okay? And uh, I can do this with the, this unzip by, ju by just passing the identity function. So at this point, I have a tuple with a stream of coffee and a stream of charge, and what I do is that uh, uh, the first one, they are just the coffee, I put them in my list. And the second one, I accumulate these charges on my, on my credit card, okay? So at the end of the story, I'm returning with a list of coffee, but uh, with one single charge. And when you apply this, the credit card will be charged only one and not ten, and not ten times, okay? Okay, so far? Okay. If you have questions, probably send me send question to my Twitter account if you want. Okay. So another thing that uh, you don't do in uh, functional programming is uh, using exception. Okay. We don't want to use a exception because uh, they are side effect, but also because uh, they are very abused. I think even for flow control. Uh, they arm the, the, the extensibility and the modifi modificability of an API. They also play the check at exception, play very, very bad with lambdas because you have to put this try catch stuff inside your lambda that is very ugly, okay? And they don't compose. And in reality, what an exception is, is just a glorified multi level go to, okay? This is what, it, if you think about it, this is what an exception is. Okay, and probably we don't want this. So, there are many ways to, to uh, represent error in uh, functional uh, programming. The, the easiest one is a try. The try uh, 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 contains the value, wraps the value. But if something go, goes wrong, you will have uh, you, you won't have the value in it, you will have the error, okay? The either is exactly the same thing, but uh, the difference is that with the try, you don't have the type of the error, while with the either, you also have the type of the error, okay? And uh, the validation is, is again the same thing, but uh, if you want, if you uh, can have uh, many errors during your, your, the computation, you can compose them, you can accumulate them, and then uh, have a list of errors instead of single error, okay? But, uh, so, let's try to not use exception to use this, this other style. Okay, so, uh, let me do another example. Uh, I have uh, a bank account, okay? And uh, I create, uh, I have a, the constructor, a method to create this bank account. And uh, I can do two operations on this bank account, that is credit some money. Uh, that will always succeed. But uh, if I want to take money from uh, my bank account, it may fail in the case I don't have enough money, okay? And uh, I'm reporting this failure with an exception, okay? So the problem, okay, uh, you have uh, already understood that uh, we don't like mutability in functional programming, and the other problem, in my opinion, is that uh, we 
we are doing error handling uh, by using exception. So let's see how we use this method. I have a, a, a list of accounts, okay, and I want to take uh, 100 euro from each of these accounts, and uh, I want to put in a list uh, the account that wasn't able to pay me this uh, 100 euro, okay? So what I do is that uh, I do a for loop, I call debit on, the on, on all this account, uh, I'll be notified with an exception where the, the account doesn't have enough money, uh, and I, when this happens, I accumulate this on this list, okay? This is the uh, uh, Java 7 style, but uh, if I try to do this in Java 8 style, things are not really better, because uh, I have to put this try catch in my lambda expression, and this ends up with a very ugly syntax, and uh, moreover, I have this side effect in, in, my, in my function that uh, uh, is adding stuff to this uh, uh, list that, that is in the uh, enclosing environment of the lambda, and this means that uh, since I have this side effect, I cannot run this stuff in parallel, okay? So this is pretty bad, okay? So let's try to use the try. The try is a monad, okay? And uh, at the beginning, I, I didn't want to use the M word in, uh, in my presentation because, ooh, people are scared about monad, right? Boo! The reality is that uh, the monad is just a pattern, okay? We learned uh, all the pattern, the strategy pattern, the, 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 the decorator pattern. Uh, we learned lots of pattern from the uh, uh, GOF, and they are really natural to us, okay? So why we don't want to learn one more pattern, okay? And the monad is a, a, a very simple idea. Monad is... Uh, uh, putting a value in a uh, computational context, okay? The monad is a pattern that wraps a value in a computational context. And you have monads in the Java 8 native API. The optional is a monad, and there the computational context is, a, is the fact that uh, the value may or may not be there. The value may be, may be missing, okay? And this is the optional. Uh, the stream is a monad. Here, the computational context is the fact that, that you can have multiple values. The completable future is a monad. Uh, they didn't use the canonical map and flat map method. For some reason, they called them uh, then apply and then compose. But if you read the signature, it's a monad. And there, the computational context is an asynchronous computation. Okay? And here, the, the tri monad is exactly the same thing. In this case, the, 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 com the computational context is a computation that may fail. That's all, okay? And uh, uh, the two typical methods that all monads have are this map and flat map method, method and the map defines how I, I, how I can apply functions to the object wrapped by the monad, and the flat map defines how the monad composes with itself. That's all. Okay, so in this case, uh, I have this try, and I have two implementations of the try. The one when uh, the computation is a success, that wraps a value, and uh, the map just uh, transforms the, the value in a different value of type B by applying this function, while the flat map just uh, does the apply, and if the function, so this function already returns a try, so it, it, it will be a failure or a success based on what this function returns, okay? And, and the failure is really simple because I'm already failing, I cannot do anything else, so the map and flat map just return this, okay? Very simple, okay? So don't fear the monad. It's a pattern, okay? So let's try to use this pattern here, okay? We said that uh, the debit operation may fail, and uh, we are signaling it not by using an exception, but by returning this try. Okay, that's all. Every, it's 
basically the same as before. Ah, and the other thing is that uh, 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 now everything is immutable because I I'm creating a new account object every time. That's all, okay? But the, the important part is that I'm not using an exception here. Okay. Uh, so how I use this stuff, I have uh, uh, the, uh, the list of accounts as before. I, I still want to uh, take 100 euros from uh, all of them. Uh, so what I do is that uh, uh, I call a map on the stream. I convert this in a tuple that, takes the ori that has the original account and also the result of this debit operation. Okay. So if uh, the result of this debit operation is a file, is a failure, I want to accumulate it, so I will filter all the account for which uh, I wasn't able to take the 100 euros. Uh, and then uh, I take only the first item of the tuple because it's the one containing the account, and I put it in a list, okay? And uh, I can do it in a more concise way even if uh, it's not that clear. And I, I, I prefer the first style, but uh, I also added this style because it's more compact. I can just do this filter. Uh, I'm not doing any map operation. I can just do the filter, this return that try, and this is, at, uh, in the, this is a failure. I'm taking it the, the account and I'm collecting it, it into the list. Okay. So the next step, is that uh, we want to move from methods to functions, okay? So I made everything static here, okay? So I have uh, an open uh, method that uh, is the, what the constructor did before, is the way to create a new account, and then I have this credit and the debit, uh, and uh, as before, the credit uh, never fail while the debit may fail. Okay. The moral of the story is that uh, if you want to give money to the bank, everything is always fine. If you want to take money, you won't be able to do this sometimes. Okay. But anyway, um, so how to use this stuff? You use it uh, in this way. You open the account and then you do a map because you are returned with a try. And then you do a map and to the map you pass a, a function that is the credit you are adding more money to your account, and once again you are adding more money, and then once again, and then you, you, you will take some money, and you are returning with this try account, okay? That's all. So I'm using the monadic method of the, of the try to apply this stuff, this, to uh, apply this operation in sequence on the original account. Okay, and uh, by the way, uh, this is the Java syntax, but uh, the Scala syntax is nicer because you have this uh, for comprehension uh, feature, so it is nicer to read this way. And uh, the, the for comprehension is just uh, uh, a function of the compiler. The bytecode uh, uh, of this stuff and, and uh, the implementation you saw in the previous slide are exactly the same. Okay, so it's just a compiler that converts this stuff that is nicer to read in the other, in the other version. It's just syntactic sugar. Okay, so we made everything static, so our object is no longer an object, we cannot have a state, and, and the complaint can be, okay, but uh, I would to need some state. I would to probably inject a connection to the bank to do those operations, okay? And I cannot do this anymore because now all the methods of my uh, object are static, so I cannot have a state, okay? So the naive solution is, okay, I need a bank connection, I can no longer inject this bank connection inside my object. Uh, what I can do is passing this back connection to each method, okay? So I do uh, exactly what I did before, but now I have to pass, to create this uh, banker connection and to pass it to every single method, okay? And uh, 
this is bad for two reasons, because I don't want to really create uh, a bank connection in advance. I want to define my computation, and when my computation is defined in a lazy way, I want to pass it the bank connection and, may, and have it executed. And, and the second uh, uh, evident ugly thing is that I have to pass this bank connection uh, to all the methods, okay? So let's try to resolve these two problems uh, one by one. The, the thing, first thing we could do is making this lazy, okay? So now I'm not having the bank connection as an argument, but now my function, our I-order function returns another function that are a function that takes in input the bank connection and the body of the function is, is exactly the same as before, okay? And I did the same for all three methods. So now it's lazy, I can do this stuff, okay? So I can create a, a, a function that takes a bank connection. The body of this function is this, but I'm not execute anything at this point. I'm just returning it with another function. And when I finally apply I, the function, when I finally pass the bank connection, all this execution is done, and I'm returning it with the try account. Okay, so I resolved it one, one of the two problems. I made it lazy. I still have to repeat connection and apply connection and apply connection and apply connection. Okay, so just to be clear of uh, what was happening. In the pure uh, object-oriented implementation, I say it open, passing two parameters. I obtain an object with a context that actually is injected and I have a state. And then I say credit on this, passing other parameter. The context is still there, and the state becomes something else. And I do this again and again and again, and at, at that some point I will obtain the result. Okay? Then we made everything static. Okay? So we have, we, uh, uh, have to pass to the open uh, function the parameters, but also the context, and we are returning to with a state. And then uh, to the second function, we have to pass the parameter, the context again, the state that uh, uh, we obtain it from the former uh, function, and we receive that second state, okay? And we do this again and again, and we obtain the result. The second version is, the third version is the, the lazy evaluation one. I uh, do this open. Now open doesn't return a state, but returns a function from a context to the state. Okay, I apply this function by passing the cost and the context. I'm, uh, I obtain S1, I do credit, I, I'm returning it with a function from the context to S2, and do this again and again and again, and I obtain the result. So this is th the flow that we have now, okay? And now we want to resolve the last problem. I don't want to repeat this apply context, apply context, apply context every time, okay? And uh, I can resolve this issue with, a, with another monad, that is the reader monad. The particularity of the reader monad is just that uh, the value that you are putting in the, compu in a comp in the computation at this time is a function, okay? That's all. Uh, and uh, I'm hiding the, the implementation here because it's not uh, really uh, nice to see in Java 8. Uh, and I wanted you to focus on the concept, on the idea, not on the implementation. So I have this monad that is putting the function in a computational context that is wrapping this function so I can modify the function by using the map and flat map method, okay? And by the way, this is the implementation in Java, okay? And then uh, I need uh, one last thing. I need to combine the trimonad with the reader monad, okay? And uh, in Scala, I do s something like uh, using a monad combinator. I try to do this in Java, but it's really impossible because the type system of Java is not strong enough. I don't have higher kind of type. So what we have to do is to create a, another monad that explicitly combine the two monads that are the try and the reader in this case. 
so I have the usual map and flat map method, method. And then I have a third method that is actually the combiner method. So to this map, I don't pass a function uh, from uh, an A to a tray reader, but from an A to a reader. So this is the combiner method, OK? Both this monad and the one before are, as I said, are wrapper of a function. So at, at some point, I'm happy with my monad. I want to execute this function. I call apply, and uh, the, the wrapped function is executed. That's all, OK? And once again, I'm adding the implementation. But uh, really, I, I didn't want you to focus on it. Just give a look at my slide after the call, the, the, this talk if you are interested in it, OK? And uh, at this point, uh, what I can do is uh, uh, returning a try reader in the case that uh, the computation may fail, so for open and debit. And I'm returning a reader because here because credit, as you remember, cannot fail, OK? And by doing so, I can do this. Okay, I'm returning with this try reader of a bank connection and account. And the, as you can see, this is exactly what we had before. Exactly. I don't, I don't have to pass a connection here and there. I'm returning with, us, with this function because I'm encapsulating all that logic inside the monads. That's the trick. Okay, so I'm returning with this function. I don't have to repeat connection, connection, connection. And uh, everything is lazy. This is a function, or whether it's a wrapper of a function, and when I call apply to it by passing up by connection, a uh, bank connection, uh, the function is executed, and I'm returning with the final result. Okay. So what I, I'm actually doing now is this. Okay. I'm calling open. This time I, no, I'm returning with a function, but the function is wrapped in this red box that is the reader monad. Okay, and then I can, since I'm doing this, I can uh, just pass the parameter as I did here, but uh, not calling credit, just map of credit. I'm returning with this other function, and do, I do this again and again and again, and at the end, I have the reader monad that is wrapping a function from the context to the result. I send the context, and I, I obtain the result. Okay, that's all. It's OK. Question? I, I lost you. <laughs> uh, just review the code, probably, and, and, I, uh, and, and I think everything will be clear. So let's do a wrap up. Let's do a wrap up. So API design, API design is an iterative process. So uh, you do an implementation, you play with it, uh, you uh, check if you like it or not, uh, you change something, and again and again. Okay, it is an in an iterative process. Okay, let's try to have everything immutable because this is a lifesaver when you do uh, parallel computation, when you do concurrency. Uh, let's try to avoid, to confine side effect, okay? Let's try to uh, avoid using an exception that are better way to do this. Use uh, types in a more expressive way, okay? So this type says that I'm returning these three things, that one of them is a function, and the, the second one is a value that may not be there, and the third one is a value that is, is still hasn't been computed. But I, I, I'm, I'm using my type system in a rich way, OK? And, and in this way, the code becomes, uh, uh, becomes uh, um, it is auto-documented, auto OK? Because you are saying with the type system, uh, wha what actually is happening in that function, okay? Then uh, uh, use an emic object, put only the state in this object, but try to avoid to put the behavior in them, and put the behavior in per function, okay? So you pass the object to the function, that are the parameter of the function, and, 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 and the pure function will, will contain the logic to operate on these objects, okay? And the other thing 
is that I believe that uh, object-oriented uh, com uh, does compose very well. An object compose like uh, a tile of a puzzle. You have to put it in a very precise position and only in that position. Uh, a function is more like a Lego bricks. You can you reuse and reuse it in many, many uh, way, ways if you design it correctly. Okay? Throw away this stuff, forget it. You don't need it. And learn some functional patterns. Don't fear the monad. Okay? So these are a few suggested readings. Uh, these are this is a book that I wrote with a couple of friends about Java 8. If you want to do functional programming in Java, I suggest this book. If I want to buy only one of the three, I suggest you the third one that is amazing. Okay? And it's about uh, real functional domain modeling. Okay? I have uh, five minutes for questions. Or I can check my Twitter if, I, if there is some question there. Question? Uh, okay, no question. Thanks. <laughs>